So thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, we are here for the 2024 property management request for quotations information session. And today is September 26, 2024. I am Eli Griffin and I am a procurement coordinator here at KCRAJ and I'm also uh, the lead for this procurement process. Uh, before we move on to the agenda, we're going to introduce uh, the KCRHA staff who are here today, who are also uh, here to answer any questions during the Q&A. So I'm going to pass it over to Abby really quick. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Abby Stepaniak. She, they pronouns. I'm the Grants and Procurement Manager uh, supporting Eli on this and look forward to any questions that you might have. Uh, Sean Wilson, do you want to go next? Sure. Thanks, Abby. Hey, everyone. I'm Sean Wilson. I manage the contracts department here at the KCRHA. I'm here to help support the procurement team with any contract related questions. So happy to be here. Uh, Sean Watkins. Yeah, everybody. Sean Watkins, Senior Policy Advisor to KCRHA. Um, I work specifically with our master lease program. Um, and so by proxy, uh, the contracted property management um, that, that we contract for those buildings. Hi, Sam. All right, thank you all so much. Um, so we'll move on over to the uh, agenda. Today, we're going to review uh, the re request for quotations background, timeline, funding, eligibility requirements, contracting requirements, submission instructions, the selection process, project scope, rating criteria, and then we'll open it up to any questions that you might have about this process. So this request for quotations is to secure property management services needed to maintain and manage master leased apartments. KCRJ intends to obtain these services through vendor agreements with a total budget across all locations and awardees not to exceed 1.8 million. The property management services procured through this process will be for properties that are utilized for supportive housing for people directly exiting unsheltered homelessness. If any future sites are developed and funding becomes available in 2025, KCRHJ may use the results of this procurement to identify agencies to provide additional property management. And for more about supportive housing and supportive housing property management best practices, um, we highly suggest checking out the Corporation for Supportive Housing's Supportive Housing Quality Toolkit. This uh, procurement process um, and all of our programs are centered in KCRIJ's theory of change, which is if we create a homeless response system that centers people with lived experience, then we will be able to focus on responding to needs and eliminating inequities in order to end homelessness for all. Uh, this uh, program is a supportive housing with high level of support and wraparound services for single adults exiting unsheltered homelessness to create a stable and welcoming environment to retain individuals in housing. Um, and as I stated earlier, this is uh, to procure property management services for this uh, project. And the property management provider must have a trauma-informed and person-centered approach um, to make sure that we stay centered in our theory of change. The timeline for this process um, started with the release date of the RFQ, which was September 19th. And we are hosting the information information session today, September 16th. Uh, the last day to submit questions about the RFQ um, is uh, October 7th with a deadline of 5 p.m. And the application deadline is October 14th, 2024 at 11.59 p.m. Denial notifications will likely go out the week of November 4th with appeals due five business days after denial. Award notifications will likely go out the week of November 11th with contract uh, development beginning that week 
and a goal contract start date of January 1st, 2025. This is funded through State of Washington General Funds, um, and KCRJ plans to award of, excuse me, KCRJ plans to award a total across all three plan locations, no more than 1.8 million annually for property management services. This budget was estimated based on anticipated additional ten needs based on the specific um, population being served requirements for property management responsibilities and the site characteristics of the three locations. Payment for all services provided in accordance with the provisions under this RFQ will be contingent upon the avail availability of funds and KCRHA shall not be required to provide any definite units of service or guarantee any minimum amount of funding for the services described. Applicants must adhere to the requirements of the RFQ in order to be eligible for consideration. This includes um, meeting KCRJ's minimum eligibility requirements, um, meeting and adhering to current appropriate COVID-19 safety guidelines and protocols, um, and for nonprofits only having a unique entity ID and federal system for award man management registration, and then for all uh, applicants, a minimum two years experience providing property management services at a facility that serves people experiencing homelessness. Any contract resulting from this RFQ will be between KCRHA and the applicant organizations. Contracts will include requirements and details for um, including but not limited to amendments, terms and conditions, books, records, and document maintenance, reports and billing documentation, protection and maintenance of confidential information. Uh, for full details, review the RFQ. Uh, the uh, applications need to be submitted via Smartsheet. Um, so complete uh, the Smartsheet form then complete an application response to the questions and rating criteria within the RFQ. We have provided an editable uh, property management uh, RFQ application that is linked within the uh, RFQ and the Smartsheet, and the Smartsheet form is also linked within the RFQ. Applicants must also submit a quotation in PDF format uh, for property management services for one to three buildings that range from 20 to 60 units each, and also submit minimum eligibility required. Uh, let me restart. Minimum eligibility documents. Please review the full case or uh, checklist document to ensure your agency meets all requirements. Um, it is an extensive list, so uh, I highly suggest uh, reviewing that as soon as possible. It is linked within our uh, RFQ document. The selection process will include an eligibility screening and then an internal review panel. The eligibility screening uh, will verify that the application is complete and has a response to all questions. All minimum eligibility documents have been submitted and that the application is submitted on time. The internal review panel of subject matter experts will review applications and then score based upon the scoring criteria listed in the RFQ, which we will review later on in this info session. Agencies must demonstrate the capacity to meet all program and minimum eligibility requirements. Agencies with a score of less than 70 will not be considered eligible, and agencies must respond expeditiously to any clarifying questions or document requests we may have. Failure to respond in a timely manner may result in agencies being deemed non-responsive and therefore will not be considered. As stated earlier, uh, we intend to obtain prop, uh, property management services through vendor agreements with a total budget across all locations and awardees not exceeding 1.8 million. 
Um, these property management services are for one to three buildings with 20 to 60 units each, serving an estimated 20 to 60 single adults per building who are directly exiting homelessness, frequently having experienced chronic homelessness, and who may have disabling conditions, mental illness, and or substance use disorder. This is supportive housing with a level of support similar to permanent supportive housing for folks who are familiar with uh, permanent supportive housing programs. These sites are located in North and Central uh, Seattle. This project and the property management services uh, are based in housing first principles. And so uh, it is supportive housing with a high level of support and wraparound services for single adults directly exiting unsheltered homelessness. The goal is to create a stable and welcoming environment to retain individuals in housing. Uh, residents uh, may have disabling conditions, severe and persistent mental illness, and or serious substance use disorder. And therefore the property management must provide services with trauma-informed and person-centered approach, uh, including staff having training in safety, de-escalation, and similar training for working with high needs populations that require trauma-informed approaches, need to, uh, to uh, have the ability to collaborate with supportive service uh, services providers, KCRHA uh, contracts those out separately from property management. And then the staff also need to be trained to provide naloxone. Uh, the scope uh, of the proper, uh, let me rephrase, the scope of the project requirements include, um, but aren't limited to day-to-day -day operations of the property, including security, maintenance, and facility management, providing 24-7 front desk personnel to monitor the property, assist tenants, and notify supportive services of issues which may arise, um, maintain physical aspects of the building, including initial setup, preventive maintenance, urgent repairs, uh, initial setup of units and unit turns, including development and execution of a lease for all tenants, discussion of resident code of behavior and house rules, obtaining, uh, supporting, uh, obtaining renter's insurance, uh, supporting the setup of utility accounts, calculation um, and collection of rent owed if applicable, and, and inspection of units at move in and move out. Um, also, coordinating with local jurisdictions and local service providers to ensure compliance with uh, laws and regulations and that tenants have the support that they need. Maintaining client files and holding tenant leases on behalf of Case or HA. Uh, be responsible for the issuance of notices to tenants and any unlawful detainer actions that occur and implement and maintain security protocols to ensure the safety of residents and staff. And again, all through a trauma-informed and person-centered approach. Uh, providers that are eligible to apply are for-profit entities, nonprofit organizations, government agencies, public housing agencies, or a or faith-based organizations. Grantees are responsible for maintaining clear and accurate project records. Any on-site staff and staff with regular interaction with residents must have de-escalation training and other support to ensure trauma-informed and person-centered interactions as uh, discussed earlier. And then having a minimum two years experience providing property management services at a facility that serves people experiencing homelessness, such as a shelter or supportive housing facility. Eligible costs include staff, equipment, and minor repairs. Ineligible costs include acquisition, capital repairs, rehabilitation, new construction, and social or supportive services. Rating criteria is a uh, total of 100 points 
with three sections with um, different uh, point totals. The first uh, rating criteria section is agency qualifications, which has a total of 25 points and includes uh, applicant being able to demonstrate experience in and high level qualifications for property management having a minimum of two years of experience in providing property management for homelessness or social service related housing. Agency is able to speak to the specific needs that people with lived experience of homelessness may have related to property management services and are able to provide a person-centered and trauma-informed approach that is appropriate for people who are exiting homelessness and staff positions and qualifications are designed to meet the needs of residents and applicant demonstrates staff are trained in property management services and are trained in de-escalation, trauma-informed, and person-centered approaches. Uh, racial equity and social justice section has a total of 15 points and includes that the applicant has a strong history and experience working with and providing property management services for people exiting homelessness, including people living with disabilities, survivors of domestic violence, immigrants and refugees, people living with substance use disorder, co-occurring co disorders, people with criminal records, people with limited English proficiency, transgender people, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, two-spirit plus community, and other communities who have historically experienced systemic oppression. Applicant demonstrates the unique needs of historically marginalized communities and can identify how they will meet those needs. The applicant understands the historical and systemic nature of systemic oppression impacting the communities and the impact property management can have on these communities. And applicant demonstrates ethical decision making. The applicant explains their commitment to make changes over time to ensure residents are satisfied with their services and successfully transition to permanent housing and applicants have a plan to build leadership capacity and opportunities for black indigenous and other people of color staff and then finally the quotation is worth a total of 60 points um, with a uh, quotation needing to be logical and cost effective quotations that are competitive and cost effective will be sc scored higher and quotation reflects the needs of tenants and project scope uh, discussed earlier in the info session. All right, so for more information, um, if you have other questions after the info session today, you can email the procurement team at rfp at kcraj.org. We ask that you do not reach out to other staff about this funding opportunity to ensure you get your answers, uh, uh, you, you get your questions answered uh, quickly and for a fair process. And the last day for questions is October 7th, 2024 at five o'clock. If we receive any questions, we will uh, post the answer on our funding opportunities webpage so that everybody has um, equal access to the information. Um, also on our funding opportunities webpage, we will post this recorded information session and the slide deck under the RFP questions and answers tab. We also post any notices of funding availability, um, live funding opportunities, as well as um, the minimum eligibility requirements checklist. With that, um, that was a lot of me reading off slides. So we will open it up to any questions that you may have at this time. I think uh, one question would be for the quotation. Are we determining a staffing model based on, I know there's a wide range of either you have 20 or 60. Is there a staffing model that's been identified? Um, there is a requirement for at least a minimum of two front desk staff. Um, other than that, the staffing model will be uh, up to the um, uh, to the applicants. Um, 
Sean Watkins, is there anything else that uh, you would add to that? No, I think that's right. Um, Sam, I think that we're primarily looking for safety reasons uh, to have a minimum of two staff 24-7. Um, I think that if there were maybe a smaller building or there were some extenuating circumstances that could move, I suppose. Um, but but the one to three buildings that we're looking at right now is two staff 24 hours a day. Understood. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions? Nope. All right. Um, well, we will wrap it up for today then. So thank you so much for attending. Um, and then this will, like I said, this will be uh, posted on our website um, if you need to review it at any time. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Take care.